likely when there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord turned around and about, and they were so afraid. And the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And you shall find the baby dwarfs in brown clothes, laying in the manger. And suddenly with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to the Lord, and on earth peace, good will towards men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Merry Christmas! Shepherds came to see the baby Stood by his mother's side Here lay the Savior inside a manger Oh, what a glorious night Oh, what a glorious night I hear the angels sing
Hi kiddos, Merry Christmas. We have learned so much about Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the wise men and all of the people who were there to celebrate Jesus's birth on that very first Christmas. But have you ever wondered, did the animals know that their creator was near? Did all of creation on the earth celebrate his birth? Well, boy, do I have a good story for you today. It's called Song of the Stars, A Christmas Story by Sally Lloyd-Jones. The world was about to change forever, and it almost went by unnoticed. But the leaves that night rustled with a rumor. News rang out across the open fields. A song drifted over the hills. The wind whispered it softly in the sycamore trees that waved their moonlit branches to the sky. A barn owl took flight. Woodland creatures stirred. It's time, it's time. In the pine woods, two deer raised their heads. A big brown bear sniffed the air. A red fox darted. The faces of little flowers lifted to the skies. It's time, it's time. The skies shouted it to the seas, that thundered it to the waves, that roared it to the great white whales, that sang it to the starfish in the deep. And tiny sandpipers danced it on shining sands. It's time, it's time. The running rivers bounded over boulders and the otters clapped and played and sang to the ducklings that splashed and quacked to the salmon that leaped and leaped. And tiny field mice and insects and little creeping things and sparrows and robins and every single blade of grass squeaked and hummed and chirped and sang, it's time. It's time. Wild stallions drummed it to the ground. Get ready, get ready, be glad, be glad. On a lonely peak, a lion raised his strong head and roared it out to the empty wilderness. The mighty king, the prince of peace. All the stars joined together in a chorus that rang out through the heavens the bright and morning star. And on a hillside overlooking a little town, sheep nuzzled their new lambs. The good shepherd has come. Suddenly angels lit up the whole sky and a great choir sang it out loud. It's time he's come, at last he's here. And in the little town, in a little shed, in a little window, a candle flickered in the dark and a tiny cry rang out in the cold night air. And high above, a single star set in the highest heavens shone out brighter than all the others and poured down silver onto the little shed, a light to light up the whole world. The animals stood around his bed and the whole earth and all the stars and sky held its breath. The one who made us, has come to live with us. And a young mother with no place to rest, nowhere to stay, kept it as a song inside her heart, our rescuer. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift, lying on a bed of straw, wrapped in rags, a tiny little baby. Heaven's son, sleeping under the stars that he made. Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. I am thrilled that you are making us a part of your Christmas experience. This is our first ever virtual Christmas service. So a couple quick things before I get going with my material today. First of all, Every year at Christmas Eve, we give our whole Christmas Eve offering to a cause we think is close to the heart of God. Last year, we gave our Christmas Eve offering to Love Pure. That's Chuck and Christy Badley of Polaris. They've started their ministry in Costa Rica. And uh, you generously gave over $50,000 last year to help them uh, reach 
children living in profound poverty in Costa Rica. Now, I want you to take a look at this video where they give an update uh, of the kinds of things that they had to shift toward in 2020. And as you watch this video, think of what impact we had. Maybe think about what couldn't have happened if Chuck and Christy weren't willing to be obedient to God if we hadn't uh, collectively been so generous last year, look at the difference that last year's Christmas Eve offering made in the lives of real children and families in third world poverty. Hey everybody, this is Chuck and Christy Badley from Love Pure. We wanted to give you an update on 2020 and the impact that your generous donations have had on the ground in Costa Rica. So caps went off in January in a, in a great way. We were down there. I think we shared a lot of that with you guys earlier in the year. Um, 120 kids came out uh, as we got into the impact of the coronavirus. What we realized is that we were going to have to really think differently on how we allocate the resources um, to make sure that the most pressing needs in the community were being met. So these Fs began home visits because um, the, the gatherings were not allowed anymore. And through those home visits, we realized that food security was one of the top problems that was coming out of COVID, this lack of um, jobs. So we started feeding a few families, and that now has blossomed into 350 families consistently getting meals um, through your donations. Um, and that will continue until the economy begins to open back up and these people are able to get back to their jobs. Um, we also identified the um, high-risk students. They closed school, just like here. They closed it last March and have closed it through next April minimum. So these, these children have lost an entire school year. Um, and a lot of these kids are at that age where it's a pivotal year. They begin to go down other paths when they don't have the education available to them. Um, so we have hired a teacher. Our partners at Ed Plus have hired a teacher um, who was furloughed. We are busing in 120, 120 kids a week. Um, for While they're there, they get tutoring. They still get Bible club and they get fed. Um, and that will continue until school opens back up. We don't know when that will be. Um, but in the meantime, we are able to provide um, an, a bridge until they can get back in school to hopefully keep these kids from going down a path that we don't want them to. As you can see, you guys have, have the, the generous donations you guys have made have, have been able to have a sin, sig, significant impact on a community that's been devastated uh, by the coronavirus. Um, <clears throat> as we look to 2021, as Christy said, we will continue to do this as long as there's a need. We'll to feed, we'll continue the education program with our, part, our wonderful partners at Education Plus. Uh, I do want to address quickly the um, last year you guys generously donated $31,000 for us to acquire a property to start a youth center. Uh, we just have not been able to be on the ground in Costa Rica this year. The funds are there. We are ready to go. We've attempted several times to make contacts through realtors and whatnot. Uh, but unfortunately, the, the nature of the area in which we're looking and the process required to actually acquire land in that area, uh, we're going to have to be on the ground. So we're still excited to do that. It's number one on our list for 2021. Um, but I, I think the last thing we want to say is, we've said it multiple times so far, your generosity has made an impact. Um, in our relationships with our, our friends, they're our family now in Costa Rica Education Plus. They keep us in the loop. We talk to them you know, at least once a week. Um, and, and we are a part of, of their family, which means you're a part of their family. So thank you so much for everything you've done. We will um, hopefully all come out of this better. Um, this is obviously God's will, and we will make the best of it. Thank you. I've watched that video a few times now, and I am overwhelmed with um, gratefulness, your generosity last year. Uh, it's exciting to be a part of that. And so we are going to again give this year's Christmas Eve offering entirely to that ministry. It all goes to um, helping those children to meet their needs, uh, spiritual needs, their physical needs. If you want to contribute to that, and we always just say, just go before God, uh, talk with God, 
and, and be obedient. There's a lot of great causes, but if this is yours, um, we really want to support Chuck and Christy and Love Pure. So the best way to do that is to download our app. And uh, you can do that by uh, searching Polaris Christian Church in your app store. And you will uh, you can download the app, and then if you hit the campaign button, that will take you straight to our Love Pure giving page where 100% goes to that ministry. You could also mail in a check to Polaris Christian. Just be sure you put Love Pure in the memo, and, and that will go toward, toward Love Pure. I also want you to know that in, on December 27th, that's this coming Sunday, uh, we're going to do virtual services only. That's mainly because with three in-person Christmas Eve services and two rehearsals, at least two, um, just a lot of work goes into Christmas Eve, give the staff and volunteers a chance to rest and enjoy the Christmas weekend. And then we'll start back in person on January 3rd. Also going to do virtual for those of you not comfortable coming back in person yet. Uh, but 10.30 a.m. January 3rd with Student Ministry SMT and Polaris Kids Children's Ministry in their own spaces. I'm going to start a series called The Year of Positivity. We're going to take January five Sundays and talk about using scripture to remain or get positive, to, to live uh, in positivity no matter what life may bring. So that is coming your way. All right, now, let me move to my material. We're in this series we've called Fear Not, talking about a few moments when the angels invaded uh, the natural world and... Um, and spoke to Mary, Joseph, and in this case today we're going to talk about the shepherds, and they led with fear not. And we've talked about a few very different, uh, very real human fears that their fear not um, spoke into. So today when it comes to the shepherds, they said fear not, and, and I think one of the things we're going to see that they're dealing with is is our fear of our standing with God. We have these ideas of who God is and what God is like. And, and, and when we think about interacting with the divine, it would probably bring about quite a bit of fear. Now, there's a little bit of healthy fear of God, obviously, but in your respect. But I want you to really think today, as you listen to this over the next few minutes, about your view of God, because we all have a view of God, and specifically, is God for you, or is God against you? Think about that. So this season, uh, for the Poindexter household, has been one with a different kind of fear. There's a new type of fear we're dealing with, in that we have a third driver in our household. Now, a lot of confidence in my son Spencer's driving ability, but it brings with it a certain amount of fear. He turned 16 this year. He got his driver's license about um, about 10 days ago now. And so um, all that kind of parental concern that we have. But there was also quite a bit of fear in the process of him getting his license. If you're a licensed driver, do you remember what it was like to go through that process for us, it started in June when he got his temps. He had to wait a while for his temps because of the COVID shutdown of the spring and early summer. Uh, you have to drive 50. You get your temps through a written test, and then you have to drive 50 hours with a licensed driver. Ten of those have to be um, in the dark at nighttime. Uh, that has to be all documented and notarized with an affidavit. And then you have to go through uh, coursework and then uh, in-car, like official in-car, and then you get to the driving exam. And as a younger person, young adult, um, teenager, uh, I remember sort of the white knuckle, the, the, the fear of the, the driver exam, because it's, it's an all-in moment. I remember uh, vividly my driving inspector. Uh, she got in the car with me, uh, buckled up, very official looking. She had her aviator glasses on, dark reddish uh, brown hair, uh, never cracked a smile, 12 pound badge, big old clipboard, and, and she recited some Ohio driver official, you're about to take the Ohio driving exam, something, something. 
But I, I mean, I was rattled just from her. And then we, there's two portions. There's the road portion. Then in Ohio, there's the, there's the um, maneuverability portion. But uh, I remember that during the road portion, she just had her clipboard there. And every now and then you just hear that, you know, you'd hear the sound of the pen writing. And I'm wondering, did I fail? I don't even know what I did wrong. Uh, just pure intimidation as this inspector stared down at me. And it just felt like, just gotcha. Like she was just waiting to, to, to find a reason to keep me from getting my license. And then was the maneuverability portion where you pull through a, a square of cones and up to the right side of a head cone and then, or left side, they pick and then back through the cones. You have to back up. And, and I remember being so intimidated that on my way back through, as I was backing up, I caught uh, the side view mirror on one of the posts that's sticking out of the cone. And I knew that I could pull forward and get myself straight and then back through and be fine and pass the test. But I panicked, so intimidated, could just sense her staring at me over my shoulder, just waiting for me to make a mistake so she could fail me. That's what I felt. And I just panicked, hit the accelerator, and the cone then caught on the side view mirror and fell over and I did fail. I had to wait seven days. I came back for the maneuverability. Had the same inspector. I so wanted a different inspector. Had the same inspector, same uh, sort of persona, posture. The, and, and, and I remember I pulled through. Then I pulled back through and, and did it well. And I just went, Whew. And she said, and I, I remember this. She said, oh, you're not done yet. Don't get too excited. You have to pull through and park in the spot that I tell you correctly. And so I managed to do that. I think I almost knocked a cone over just trying to get out of, of the cones over to the parking spot. I was so rattled because in my mind, she was so against me. All the authority to get me my license or not. And, and she was against me. She's just ready to just, gotcha, no license for you. So I had those memories in my mind, and it was time for my son to go get his license. And I remember he pulls up to the maneuverability. I was in the car with him this time because now the inspector's on the outside because of, of uh, COVID, and the licensed driver is you. And my heart's pounding because, you know, it's just um, probably PTSD from my own experience. But uh, also you want your kid to do well, and, and, and this inspector comes out. And he is wearing all black everything. Stately dude, you know, black uniform, got his badge on, got his black mask, got a black stocking cap on. And he's walking and like, you know, it seems like it's in slow motion. Everything's gray, overcast. He walks up to the car, bird, the flock of birds, you know, disperse. And it's just this intimidating moment. And then he bends down. And I'll never forget this. He bends down. And looks in at both of us. And he says, Hey, buddy, I want you to relax. I want you to take your time. Pull forward slowly, go up to the right side of the cone. When you back up through, you can use your side mirrors, you can use your rear view mirror, you can use your backup cam, you can turn around and look on both sides. Just don't put your head out of the window. Take your time. If you think, you're going to hit a cone, pull back forward, straighten up, do it again. That only costs you two points. You can miss 24 points and still pass this test. So when you're ready, take your time and go ahead and start. It put me at ease. I'm sure it put him at ease. It had this very real feel that he wasn't there to say, gotcha. He was there to like, getcha. He was there to getcha. Your license, he wanted you to do well. He was for you. So Spencer pulls up through, pulls back through. The inspector walks up to the car and says, good job, buddy. He didn't even make him pull up through and park. I said, that's it? And he said, yep, just get next door and get your license. Like this guy was for the student. He wanted to get you your license. So two very different inspectors. One was there. Gotcha. Ready to keep you from getting what you wanted. 
The other was with you and for you, and he wanted you to get your license. He wanted what was good for you. So we can debate whether it's like which posture is better to give a 16-year-old a guided missile. Like maybe it's best that the person's kind of against them getting it. But for our purposes today, I want you to think of your view of God. Which inspector do you think God is like? Is he like my inspector who seemed to be against me just waiting to launch if I messed up? Or was he like Spencer's inspector? He was there hoping for my success, ready to help me succeed, calming my nerves. Which is your view of God? Because when the shepherds were faced with the divine that night, they were terrified. Let's take a look at Luke 2. This is the passage that the Charlie Brown Christmas special made famous. And there were shepherds living out in the flocks, living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. So they are now in the midst of the divine, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will be cause for great joy for all people today. In the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Now, that passage of Scripture is loaded with implications that should affect our view of God in many ways. But we need to understand the shepherds. The shepherds were one of the lowest classes of citizens. They were not considered to be trustworthy. Their character was not trusted. Did you know that shepherds were not allowed to appear in the court of law? Like their testimony was not valid. They were considered the lowest of the low. And yet when God chose to announce the coming of his son, he could have picked high-class citizens. He could have went to the religious elite. He could have gone to the most spiritual. But instead... He goes to the lowest of the low and says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I have good news for you. What does that do to your view of God? What kind of inspector is God? See, the shepherds were untouchable. Literally, they were untouchable. They were considered unclean because they were always out with the animals, doing dirty things around dirty things. And in that day and age, you had to be considered spiritually clean to worship at the temple. And you were made unclean if you even brushed up against something that was unclean. So literally, those shepherds being seen as unclean, nobody would have touched them. Nobody would have come near them. It was like social distancing 2,000 years ago. They were essentially in quarantine all the time. Nobody who wanted to be spiritual could go near a shepherd. They were untouchable. And yet, the divine interacted. God interacted. The angels interacted. Don't be afraid. I have good news for you. Of all the ways that God could have come to announce the birth of his son, he picked the untouchable shepherds. But in addition, addition to being untouchable, they were also unqualified. Like they were far from God and considered far from God. Their reputation was such as being far from God. And yet God invaded that. And he says, I have good news for you. You're not qualified. You're untouchable. But a Savior is born to you and is born for all people. So part of what your view of God may be uh, based on the things you know you've done. And God knows. God knows how far we are. God knows how far off we are. God knows the things that we've done, the things we've gotten ourselves into, the addictions, the mean thoughts, the mean things we've posted on Facebook, uh, the mean things we've said and done about other drivers. He knows it all. He knows everything we've taken from work. He knows everything we've lied about on our tax returns. He knows it all. And he knew those shepherds. And he knew that they weren't qualified. But he said, I have good news for you. I am sending a Savior. Someone to save us from those things. So I have one more passage of Scripture that I want to read from you for you today. 
It comes from uh, the book of Colossians. It speaks of the birth of the Son, the one and only Son, and why it's good news and how he saved us. So here we go. Paul says the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So, creator of all things, before all things, that's who Jesus was and is. And he's the head of the body, the church. He's the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus. Jesus, God in the flesh. And through Jesus, <clears throat> to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. All things reconciled through Jesus. The angel, on behalf of God, came to that shepherd, those shepherds very far from God, says, I know you're untouchable, I know you're not qualified, but a Savior is coming today who will reconcile you with God. He'll make peace between you and God by shedding his blood on the cross. He's going to come and he's going to pay your death penalty for you. Now think about your view of God. Do you think of God as the gotcha God, just waiting for you to do something wrong so he can disqualify you, so he can distance himself from you, so he can tell you how you are not worthy? Or is he the inspector that's trying to get you, get you where you need to go? It's the God who sent his son to make peace with you by paying the death penalty on the cross. It's the God who's reconciled to himself all things through the birth and life and death and resurrection of his son. I hope you see this moment when the angels were terrified in the presence of God, when the shepherds were terrified in the presence of God, and the angels said, don't be afraid, I have good news for you. And I hope that forever changes your view, your view of God if it needs changed. Some of you have views of God that are warped because of past church experience, because of authoritarian figures, because of very evil things that have happened to you. And maybe you can't fathom a good God that is for you, who loves you. But this Christmas story, especially the moment when the angel interacted with the shepherd and said, don't be afraid, I have good news. This gives us a view of God. The God who is for us, the God who is with us, who came to be with us and walk among us, the God who paid our price, the price for our sins on the cross to bring us near, the God who loves us and is for us and who wants to connect with us and who wants to get us where we want to be in life and, and help us find peace and fulfillment and joy and love. That's the God of Christmas. That's the view of God that we get through this Christmas story. And I hope that if you need it, your view of God changes from this encounter between the shepherds and the angels. So uh, have a Merry Christmas. I'm going to pray for you and your family. And uh, I, again, I just hope that you can find today in these scriptures the view of the God who is for you. That's the kind of news that we need in a year like 2020. Let's pray. Father, thank you for that incredible night when the divine broke through the natural world. Thank you for announcing. Thank you for choosing shepherds and for announcing to them that there is nothing to be afraid of. You are for us. And you came with us through your son, Jesus, and made us right and reconciled us. Help us to trust that love and that view of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas, everybody.
Lord.